Hey, what's up everyone, Ben at ProFixer, and today on the channel we have a really cool video on how you can charge a battery without the actual device. We'll be using this device here, which is really similar to a Kaizi charger, which I actually showed a couple months ago, maybe over a year. It's a pretty old video, um, but it's really popular, so we thought we'd made an update version of that. This particular charger can be found at Injured Gadgets, and I linked it up in the description below. Also, don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and please comment below what you'd like to see in future videos. Without further ado, let's take a look at this battery charger. Here in front of me on the bench, I have a Sunshine Universal Battery Charger Board. This is the one that's extremely similar to the Kaizi that I reviewed a couple months or a year ago. Um, I have the link in the description below so you can see that video and kind of see how these compare with each other. Uh, but essentially, these are just the same thing. However, this Sunshine Universal Board is more modular. So it has these little boards that you can connect on and they have so many more connectors on here that you'd be able to connect just about any battery. Um, they have iPads, they also have like Huawei, and a whole bunch of you know strange models of phones that you probably would have a hard time trying to charge if you didn't have one of these boards. So these are incredibly awesome to have. Link that up in the description as well. So pick one of those up for your shop because they're extremely cheap, but extremely useful. Um, the way that these work is you have this top piece here that has the voltage and the amperage readout. Essentially, this is the whole charger itself. It has a couple different USB ports on here as well. It has basically two different... Uh, um, two different hubs. Um, one side is a fast charge, one side is a smart charge. The fast charge side charges at an extremely fast rate, um, sometimes over three amps. Um, the smart charge side charges a little bit less, but generally it charges right about two amps or you know, right almost at three. Um, so it seems like a better choice, especially considering that you're charging lithium ion batteries and they're kind of sensitive. You don't want to increase the amperage and just totally you know, overcharge a battery um, with too high of amps. Um, so I always recommend using the smart charge side. Um, however, one cool feature with this particular board is it does have a discharge feature. You can flip this switch to the, uh, to the one side where it says discharge. And if you have these boards plugged into the fast charge side, it will discharge the battery, reducing the amount of volts that are in the actual battery itself, which could be a good idea if you had a fully charged battery that you needed to discard. Um, before putting it into your discard bin, um, you could plug it in, let it discharge some. That way it's not a full battery that's just sitting in a box with a whole bunch of other batteries. The ways that you connect these is it has a micro USB here at the top. That is going to be for power in. Um, these power outs right here for these boards are going to be these here. You know, like I mentioned earlier, I'd recommend using the smart charge side. Uh, these boards look just like this. They have a micro USB at the top, a couple different LEDs, um, but essentially you just plug a battery in and connect your cables and it starts to charge. One of the interesting things with this, and I actually had a Sunshine board previously that we tried to make a video with, but it started to puff out the magic smoke, so we uh, had to power, turn it off. And, uh, and we're actually getting smoke coming out of it, so that is actually the... So we had to turn it off and uh, cut that video and buy a new charger. Um, the previous one that we had did not come from Injured Gadgets and it looks like a little bit different version because this one does have you know, iPhone 8s, 10s, 10s Max, 11, 11 Pro Max, um, all those newer device models on it, so I think they've updated it just a little bit. Um, but whenever you plug a battery in, it always seems like the battery has to come off the same side as the connectors. Um, so I'll kind of show you what I mean by that. Um, when you plug these in, you'll have the battery upside down and you'll plug it into um, the 7 and 7 Plus connector and you'll see a red light turn on. If you take a Galaxy battery though, they are reversible as far as how they'll plug in. They plug in both sides just the same. However, we found out that if you plug them in just like the iPhone boards with the battery hanging off the side closest to the connector itself, that is the proper way to charge it. If you reverse the polarity because these connectors are reversible, you'll get a blue light. However, when we had the blue light on our previous charger and we plugged it in, we started to see smoke and it just was not a good experience. And so um, basically red lights seem like that's how they're supposed to work. So with either of these plugged in, you have a red light on your iPhone battery, you have a red light on your Galaxy battery. Um, you can take a cord that's plugged in directly to just a regular phone charger. The amount of volts that you want coming out of your charger is gonna be five volts. Um, it does come with this DC power supply to micro USB connector. If you do decide to use one of these, make sure that you tune your uh, DC power supply right into five volts and they'll be right at the sweet spot for this here. Um, so we'll go ahead and plug this in and you'll see that it immediately turns on and we'll see that we have 5.08 volts and we have zero amps. 
Um, basically what that means is you have um, five volts available, um, but then there's no amperage draw, which is a good thing because there's nothing connected to this. Um, but if you go ahead and take your cord and plug it in, and you plug this into either one of these boards, you will immediately start charging the battery itself, and you'll start to see some amperage draw. So in this particular one, we see that we have 4.8 volts, and we have 2.03 amps. So the amount of amps that are going into the battery is right at two amps, and then the voltage does drop just a tiny bit because it's like voltage under load, and, um, and it adjusts in that essence. Um, what you can do with this here is we're in the smart charge side. If we unplug it and plug it into the fast charge side, you will see the amperage jump up to two and a half. So it's uh, substantially higher. Depending on the actual charge that you have on your battery itself, it could be anywhere like between two to almost four amps. We plugged one in earlier and it's charging at 3.4 amps, which is pretty crazy. Um, but plugging it into the smart charge side, it will always drop the amount of amps, which we feel that's a little bit safer. So we always recommend using the smart charge side unless you're decharging and then plug it into the fast charge and make sure that you have the switch turned to discharge. Um, taking a look at this one over here as far as your Galaxy board, and we'll plug that in, it's the same exact thing, um, where we have the 4.7 volts and then we have 2.12 amps. Um, once again, if you plug it into the fast charge side, this one here charges a bit higher at 2.6 versus that 2. Point, uh, I think it was like 2.1. Um, so it does lower the amount of amps, just like on an iPhone board, works exactly the same. But regardless of the battery you're charging, we do recommend charging on the smart charge versus the fast charge, just because it puts in a little bit less amps and is probably a bit more healthy for the battery itself. Another really cool thing that the Sunshine battery charger does, as well as the Kaizy, is you can check the actual voltage of a battery itself before installing it in a phone. We always do this to ensure that the batteries are um, at the proper operating voltage. So if we go ahead and unplug this from power and we leave our cable connected into um, the daughter board and then into the battery, we can then take a look on here and see that this particular one is 3.79 volts. Um, that is gonna be the actual voltage that this battery is putting out. Um, what that means is if you took a multimeter and had it on the volts DC um, selector, you would get the same volts coming out of the battery if you took your probes and connected it on the connector itself. However, this is much more convenient as you can just plug it into the connector, don't have to worry about probing the um, battery itself, um, and it'll give you the actual voltage of the battery, which is, which is incredibly convenient. Uh, same thing with the iPhone battery as well. You can plug this in and we can see that it has um, 3.99 to 4 volts, which is, uh, um, which is right at the optimal amount before you install it into a phone. The way that you can see the actual voltage that the battery should have is you can look on the sticker itself. So this one in particular has a bunch of different uh, numbers on here, but basically you can take the low numbers and compare them to the high numbers. Um, this one says 3.85 volts and it's 4.4 volts. So anywhere within that range would be the proper uh, voltage before you installed it in a device. And so if we plug this one back in, I think this was actually under that amount. So I would definitely recommend charging this before putting it into a particular device. Yeah, this one says 3.77. So we do wanna make sure that this one charges up to at least 3.85. Um, so that's always good to know, that way you don't give a phone back dead to a customer. And also if your battery is too much under the voltage that it should be at, it can also cause damage to the operating system and to the file system inside of the phone. There was actually something that was um, quite common on iPhones. If you put a battery in there that was under 3.7 volts, it could cause uh, an error with the operating system and file system, effectively making the data non-accessible. So at that point, a customer would have come in for a regular battery exchange. If you put a battery in there that was too low, it would actually wipe their whole phone, which is an incredibly bad day. And the only option is to just restore the phone and hope that they had a backup available. So this would prevent that by being able to check the amount of volts that are in the batteries themselves. So this particular one here says 3.99. If you take a look at this battery, um, Andrew Gadgets has made it nice because they say standard voltage is 3.82. So as long as you're above 3.82, then you'd be safe to install it in a device. Um, some of the things to note with this as well um, is that some of these boards do have like C1, this one has I1, and uh, so on and so forth. 
they have I1 and I2. Um, and that, I do believe, correlates to the smart charge and fast charge as far as the I and the C. And even though they are labeled, I do always charge everything in the smart charge side because it always seems like a little bit lower amperage, which like I said before, always seems like the safest bet whenever you're charging a battery um, and you don't want to put you know, too many amps into it because that could cause damage to it. So we always charge it on the C side, which is the smart charge side, regardless of what the board itself says. And one last thing, I wanna show you the discharging function on here. So if you plug a battery in and you connect the daughter board to the device, you do have to plug it into the fast charge USB set. Um, go ahead and switch it to discharge and we will see now that we're at 3.84 volts and it's discharging at a rate of 0.79 amps. Um, one thing to be careful of is these two components here will get extremely hot as they are basically shorting and dissipating via heat the energy that is inside of the battery. Um, but that is a way that you can lower the voltage of a battery if it is seeming pretty high before you go ahead and discard of it, um, which is a pretty convenient feature there. Um, but always charge on the smart charge side, discharge on the fast charge, make sure your selector is on discharge or uh, charge depending on what you're doing. And you will be able to charge your batteries and inspect the actual voltage before installing them in a device. I appreciate everyone still watching and I hope it's a little bit easier to understand what this universal sunshine charger actually does. But extremely convenient, it's linked up in the description below as well. Everything on my workbench is linked up there too. So be sure to check that out and pick up some awesome tools like this Sunshine Universal Charger for your workbench. And as well, don't forget to like this video and subscribe, and please comment below what you'd like to see in the upcoming videos, and we'll see if we can make a video on that particular topic to help you out in your repair shop. But once again, my name is Ben Rosso, and I'll see you on the next video.